out of your opponent, and then hopefully it'll give you an idea of what your strategy should be going forward. So it does look like Charlie is playing an Arceus V Star deck and ooh, rocking out with a couple of unique cards has the Flygon V from Brilliant Stars. I know a popular inclusion that uh, has popped up here and there. Of course, Beedrill from Trilling Rain using- Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get to see some Persist Stingers potentially taking out Pokemon. Just that stage two Pokemon that it feels so hard to play stage twos these days. Rare mm. Candy is, it's so slow and getting a stage two into play, it's just too many turns. Um, but Charlie- Looks like a mulligan coming out here. Charlie has that single strike mustard, three copies of it in oh, order to, try to, combo. try to get those Beedrills in play. It might not be as great in this matchup as we just saw from the Mulligan. Gabe is on the Rapid Strike Malamar today. Rapid Strike Malamar. I've heard a really uh, strong showing from this deck has already happened uh, so far in the earlier rounds and in some previous tournaments. Uh, felt to be in a really good spot just to participate and play with the big boys, but one of the hardest decks to play at the same time. I think it's like a deceptively hard deck to play. A lot of players would look at it and be like, okay, simple, Rapid Strike Tentacles deals more damage for each Rapid Strike card in my hand. So I'm just gonna draw a bunch of cards and, you know, do a bunch of damage, 40 damage for each of those cards that you reveal and shuffle uh -huh. back into the deck. But managing your resources in these single prize decks is so vital and so important that a lot of players make simple mistakes that end up costing them games. Gabe has not done very much of that today, though, it seems as they find themselves at 4-0 and already. You've got to be able to stick to your guns, right? You know, mm -hmm. a lot of players who were practicing on the Rapid Strike Malamar, they love the Ultra Ball, they love the Cynthia's Ambition. We see some prizes being laid out. Two single strike mustards in the prize cards, which is a little oh, no. unfortunate. I think we've got it switched here. It should be Charlie's prizes there on the right. But this is a matchup where Beedrill is a little tough to make work because you want to use it to get a knockout on a V-Max or a V-Star Pokemon. Right. Whenever your opponent has just a single prize Malamar in the active, mm -hmm. it feels like a lot of extra unnecessary work to get a Beedrill in play to just take out one prize KO. Now, it is important to try to work in Beedrill at some point, I still think. I, I think you want to try to utilize that one prize option mm -hmm. to, to help your prize trade. But it's less yeah, put it in crucial. the active spot, mm -hmm. maybe try to buy a turn. Less crucial than in maybe other matchups, though. Right, because that persisting only will instantly KO a Pokemon when it has the special energy right. already on it. So sometimes uh, we've seen players set up the B drill and it just sits there and sits there and pressures. Yeah, <laughs> just, the just existing on the bench mm -hmm. <laughs> puts on so much pressure to the opponent. Before they can do their, uh, you know, their strategy, they have to play a boss's orders or something to get that out of the bench and get it out of the way. Before before they can truly begin to take over the board. But the players now, looks like they're set up, uh, just waiting for the go-ahead for the round to start. And we're gonna see these starting Pokemon revealed. The players are gonna come out swinging. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing how this matchup will play out. I gotta favor the single prize attacker into a multi-prize deck, mm -hmm. but it is, okay, it's, it still can go either way. And that is an interesting card. Charlie Lockyer is actually playing a 2-1 Sandaconda VMAX line. And that is a really spicy inclusion. There's a couple of players who are on this list. Yeah, trying to take that fighting weakness. Exactly. Supplement the deck, try to hit some of these other Arce uh, Arceus decks. Yep. Meanwhile, on the other side, we've got Inke set up. So that's going to be a Ma Malamar pretty soon. And uh, get those Rapid Strike tentacles uh, up and running. Charlie is going first. Just searching through the deck. Looks like a quick ball played right away. Just discarding a card and now can get any basic Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And when you're playing this Arceus deck, the key thing in the first turn is getting down an Arceus and putting an energy on it. This allows you to set up for a Trinity Nova on turn two. Mm -hmm. And if you miss that turn one energy attachment, it really does put you pretty far behind that the way it cascades with accelerating the other three energies you search out of your deck onto your next attacker. That way you have some options to pivot into. Right. Uh, you have something that you can attack with if that uh, your active does get knocked out. I love, of course, players taking this opportunity to get the quick ball turn one and take a deep look at the deck as well. Form your strategy around what's prized and what's missing from your, you know, sort of the puzzle of your deck. But now things are back over to Gabe. Going with the Fog Crystal, probably going to try another find uh, find another Inke, get that set up. 
Fog Crystal is such a great utility option in this specific deck. It can get your NKs in play. You mm -hmm. need to get at least a couple of those bad boys set up. But it can also find an energy attachment for you. This deck does play a few basic psychic energies. And using those basic psychic energies is really nice because it means you don't have to utilize spiral energies as your energy attachment for turn, and that's another Rapid Strike card that you get to just keep in the deck and are able to eventually reveal with Rapid Strike Tentacles mm -hmm. to deal 40 extra damage. So right away, double NK means that you have these options, the makings of the strategy of the deck coming together, but we'll have to see if Gabe has enough time, again with Charlie with the Arceus in the bench with that energy on it, as you said, Chip, is so important. There is a chance for an explosive follow-up turn here if Charlie gets the opportunity. Gabe also playing the Karuna's Focus. Going to draw up to seven cards here. Up to six. So two, oh, two more here and gets looking for Sobbles, I would imagine. And that is a great find. Mm. Sobble right away. That's really a card that you actually love to start with this Rapid Strike Malamar deck. It's Keep Calling Attack is excellent. Gets you three Rapid Strike Pokemon in play. So you can just fill your board with extra Pokemon. Unfortunately, Gabe did start the NK, and uh, it'll be on to Charlie, and we'll see what options Charlie has available. Yep, we got the air balloon going onto the Sandaconda. Training court hitting the board, and we've got some attachments onto that Arceus, double turbo energy, and the choice belt getting it all set up into Ooh. a rod. What a turn here. Charlie is going to be able to go for that single strike mustard right away, plays the hand all the way down, slams it into play, and here comes Beedrill. Single strike mustard, super powerful supporter, was able to grab it with the luminous sign of Luminion V, a super good card. Players who've been playing for a while may recognize it. this ability, very similar to Tapu Lele GX, which was one of the best cards for a long time, similar to Jirachi EX from even previous to that. Mm. So uh, yeah, just grabbing that single strike mustard out of the deck. And if it is the last card in your hand, you just get to go get a single strike Pokemon from the deck and slam it into play. And that's exactly what Charlie did. And so then the B drill hits the bench. We get to draw more cards thanks to that effect resolving, thanks to the single strike mustard. And now Cramomatic. Big flip. It is a Tails. So just thinning the hand even more unfortunate. I think that's what Charlie needed to find an Arceus V-Star. Oh, this hand is bad. Charlie doesn't have like anything in this hand. Yeah, it's just mostly energy. Sends up the Arceus. Is just going to go in with the Power Edge. Deals 130 damage, minus 20, of course, for that double turbo. So mm. 110, still enough to knock out this NK, but not getting the evolution there is really bad for Charlie because Arceus V has 220 hit points versus the V-Star having 280. That is much easier for Gabe to find a way to knock out with Rapid Strike Tentacles. And as we get into this turn, again, just searching through the deck with Drizzile, gonna grab that evolution incense, it looks like, but gonna take a deeper look as well, forming that strategy, heading up to the next turns. When you see your, when you look across the table and you see this, this Arceus V set up, the Beedrill set up, this, this Sandaconda as an additional threat you need to worry about, but then when your opponent just kind of throws it back to you, they don't do anything explosive beyond that, no V-Star in play, you don't have to worry about Starbirth just yet. Maybe Gabe is feeling a little bit less pressure right now, looking for this Malamar and just taking the time here in game one to think very heavily. Yeah, it does use Shady Dealings and grabs out that Brawly, the Rapid Strike supporter, which allows you to search your deck for three Rapid Strike cards and put them onto your bench. So I don't expect Gabe to be getting a knockout here. Uh, their hand would have to be absolutely perfect, I think, <laughs> to make that happen. And uh, yeah, I think Gabe recognizes, hey, if I can just get set up, I should win this prize trade. So I'm going to value using uh, the Brawly, take it a turn slower, not go in with a Cynthia's Ambition to just try to draw a bunch of cards, and Brawly can set the board up for future turns. The window of opportunity certainly is there without an additional attacker to try to come up into the active once that right. first Malamar KO does go through. But Charlie is, uh, looks like they're ready to go here. Yeah, Charlie just does not have much going on mm -hmm. in this hand and is, uh, looks like we're just getting the board straightened up a little bit. That Primate Wisdom Oranguru does come into play and this will allow you to swap a card from your hand with the top card of your deck. This could maybe bail Charlie out here. Let's see what this one grab is. This could be a big deal. 
it looks like it was another energy. So oh no, not great. But this is smart. Charlie's going to use energy search to shuffle the deck because yeah. Charlie knows that the top card of the deck is an energy. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to just draw that for turn next turn, and you know that it's useless. So by shuffling the deck with energy search, you thin a card out, get that energy back into hand, and now you're increasing your odds to draw into a supporter. And there's the cut. So Charlie will go ahead on prizes here. P Power Edge would take another KO, but Charlie is just yeah, they're, really they're just a not little bit set more up setup that that needs to happen yeah. for, for sure. You're just attacking against these single prize decks, and this is one of the strategies for the single strike Malamar is when you're playing a single prize deck, you force your opponent to give you so many extra turns to get set up. We haven't seen Malamar hit the board yet, but now with the last Inke coming up into the active spot, this might be the turn where Gabe's hand is forced, where you might actually need to go for that attack. We've got Octillery now coming through with the Rapid Strike Search. So good. He's gonna and be able to search through that deck, get a Rapid Strike card. Gabe's able to actually utilize Charlie's Training Court, which is a huge mm -hmm. factor for the Malamar in this matchup. Being able to just grab back that basic Psychic Energy and then not having to use your Spiral Energies just adds to the extra Rapid Strike cards you can reveal later in the game. Gabe only draws two cards off the Karina's focus, still has access to Rapid Strike Search, and I do believe I see a scoop up net in hand, so we'll at least have the option to potentially pick up this Drizzile and use another Shady Dealings. So it's still entirely possible we could see the KO this turn, and right away, Evolution Incense brings that uh, Sword and Shield base set Intellion right <laughs> to the front of the deck. Once we get the Intellion in, that's gonna be even more searching. Uh, two trainer cards, thanks to that Shady Dealings. And here it comes down, just going through, thinning the deck. I think that when you're drawing just two cards off of the Corinna's Focus, it means that the rest of the cards in your hand are obviously very good. Right. Gabe, with that Rapid Strike Tentacles, needs to make sure the hand is still properly filled with those Rapid Strike cards. So what Gabe needs this turn is Gabe needs six Rapid Strike cards mm -hmm. in order to deal enough with Rapid Strike Tentacles to knock out Arceus V. Gabe also needs to find the Malamar, right? You mm -hmm. have to have Malamar in play in order to be able to attack. And then Gabe also needs to find a replacement Inke. If, if Gabe is unable to bench an Inke, that opens up a huge window for Charlie to just come in and knock out a Malamar. But actually, you know, looking at Charlie's board, I don't think Charlie would be able to knock out a Malamar next turn. I don't think that there's anything that Charlie actually could do that would allow that to happen. So maybe Gabe wouldn't feel the pressure to put another Inke down. Just save it. That way, uh, it's maybe not weak to boss, but yeah. he's going to get it down. It, it, there's no if if Gabe has the knockout already, no reason really to worry about it. If you were maybe otherwise. a bit further behind, sure. then uh, you might want to hold this in K to try, to try to keep it safe. But again, just more searching, thinning the deck. This is so important for not just this game, this deck, for but for Pokemon as a whole. Absolutely, uh, getting the cards into the hand. Yep. Rescue Carrier being added Huge. from the Drizzile Shady Dealings. This is going to allow you to search your discard pile, get those important pieces back into the strategy, back into this wheel that keeps on turning. And finally, Chip, we see the Malamar hit. There it is, Rapid Strike Tentacles, dealing 40 damage for each Rapid Strike card you reveal from your hand, and then you shuffle those cards back into your deck. And this is excellent mm -hmm. use of the Rescue Carrier, because it adds two Rapid Strike cards to the hand. Like we said, Gabe needs to reveal yep. six here, can shuffle them in, and now those NKs are back in the deck, and you'll have access to be able to bench them in future turns, because that's something you need every turn, is, is another NK. And there Beautiful. it is! Six cards back to the deck, 240 damage, more than enough to deal with the Arceus V. And I actually don't think that Charlie can take a knockout this turn. If this Malamar is able to stay in the active for another round and hit yeah. again, what a dangerous position to be in. And not only that, with that Arceus V going down, that denies the V star to Charlie. If there was some sort of out they were hoping right, for right. to use that star birth ability to Top decking an Ultra Ball or something. And more energy in the hand. Can Oranguru come through? It's really going to be on to this Oranguru to keep Charlie in the game. Let's see what that draw is. Oh, was it something playable? Uh, he didn't slam it down, so I feel like this is a little bit of a tough spot. Now, Beedrill does have a second attack that can come in. It does 110 damage, but it's just not quite enough. Oh, 
but with the Zigzagoon ping, that actually is a huge Into deal. The and second the second mustard. Si and the single strike mustard. What a play from Charlie. It seemed like he had absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah. And this is actually a really interesting interaction. So single strike mustard says that you search your deck for a single strike Pokemon and then put it into play. Mm -hmm. And then it says, then shuffle your deck and draw five cards. So even though Charlie did not put a single strike Pokemon in play because that other Beedrill is prized, Charlie still gets to draw five cards. Okay, so we Perfect. have another shot at getting something up and running here. You've got to get this Malamar out of the equation. Arceus, number two, hitting the bench. Super funny interaction, because normally with a, a card like this, you know, if you think back to things like Maxi's Hidden Ball trick, Archie's Ace in the Hole, mm. they only worked when you actually put a Pokemon in play. But just the wording of Single Strike Mustard allows you to still draw the cards. And that Zigzagoon ping was so clutch. That is exactly what Charlie needed to try to keep up the tempo of this game. Fortunately for Gabe, however, thanks to that rescue carrier, there are a couple more Inkays yep. that can be gotten. This one has the energy attachment. Our t artillery is still ready to go, maybe searching out the next Malamar. And, and we know Gabe has that Intellion in hand from last turn. True, Scoop up true. netted it. So there, I mean, just being able to shady dealings for two trainers with that Sword and Shield base set Intellion, mm -hmm. incredibly strong. And it, it makes it very hard to whiff with this deck. Mm -hmm. Ordinary Rod, putting those back in. And now we're going to get those fished back out. And you can really just see the multi-step process of the cards being shuffled back in thanks to the tentacles, yep. pulling things back from the discard pile with the ordinary rod and the rescue carrier, and then everything being searched back out with the Inteleon engine and Octillery. The, it's beautiful to see this deck in motion. It's a little awkward here that Gabe has chosen to okay. use the Shady Deal. Oh, I think, I guess, had to with the way the hand was. Has an Evolution Instant, so it could have Drizzled and then used Drizzle for Cynthia's Ambition. Mm -hmm. But that is definitely the supporter Gabe is going to want to play this turn. Cynthia's Ambition, a new card from Brilliant Stars, allows you to draw until you have five cards in your hand. Not the strongest effect. But if any of your Pokemon were knocked out during your last turn, your opponent's last turn, you get to draw until you have eight cards instead, which is incredibly strong in single prize decks where your opponent is going to be taking a lot of knockouts per game. So you have plenty of turns to utilize it. And this is a great turn. Draw six cards. Six. Wow. So now we're going even deeper into the deck. This is going to fill your entire hand with potentially rapid strike cards so you can just use your Malamar. Now, the question is, you want to just get this Beedrill out of the equation. You're looking for some sort of switch here. Uh, pull up this Anaconda, maybe snipe this second Arceus V. Yeah, usually these Malamar decks do not play gusting cards. Mm. Usually they're just relying on being able to KO whatever is in the active spot <laughs> every single turn. Just and keep on swinging until the opponent goes down, huh? I think there's just a discussion here about if that Saba was in play. It was in play, so Gabe is free to evolve it and use Shady Dealings. Cannot use this other one, though. The, the other two Sabas were both benched this turn. And Gabe eyes up a Rapid Strike card right away. Doesn't need too many um, trainer cards. Doesn't need too many Rapid Strike cards in order to knock out Beedrill, since it does have a lot less HP than something like Arceus V or Arceus V Star. Yep, gets that Brawly. Rapid Strike Search grabs any Rapid Strike card. Octillery is really just kind of the lifeblood of this deck, just keeping the game flowing, letting you set up whatever single Rapid Strike piece you may or may not need. When you're playing a, co a combo deck like this, missing that one piece is going to be absolutely devastating. There's the attack, yep. taking that one prize. And Gabe actually does play the one boss. We actually just saw Gabe take it out of the prize card. So that is really key. That, that's kind of a tech one card that we've seen a lot of these Malamar decks include over the last few weeks. Yeah. And Gabe decided to bring it to the regionals. When you, find, when you find like one card that especially that as the meta is shifting feels a little bit weaker, becomes a lot easier to get that boss's orders back in. We've even seen like music, for example, running like Echoing Horn, just these very small techs as they adapt to the meta game. But now the ball's back into Charlie's court. Yeah, Charlie is eyeing up the... Finally, the V-Star hitting. That yep. Star Birth might be the answer here. So far, Charlie's been having a pretty lackluster sequence with just a hand filled with energies. Oranguru able to bail out for a couple rounds, but now this could be finally the explosive turn Charlie was looking for. The prizes are even right now, but if you can catch Gabe without that Malamar keeping you under pressure, this is where you can jump out ahead here in game one. 
And Charlie normally would not be able to attack here, but has a copy of Raihan in the deck. And that's what we saw grabbed with the Starbirth and right away slams it down. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out during your opponent's last turn, you can play this card and then get a basic energy from your discard pile, attach it to one of your Pokemon, and then you search your deck for any single card. So Charlie will get to search for three specific cards out of the deck this turn. Thanks to Starbirth and thanks to Raihan, incredibly strong. Yeah, so, and sorry, Charlie, the rest of those mustards are, are prized. So. <laughs> no, no more crazy combos for you. At least you're in game one, but yeah. taking a deep Not look at the turn. deck, again, the players refreshing their memories. Okay, what do I have left in the deck? What am I building my strategy around in order to finish out this game? Uh, Air Balloon on the Oranguru is fantastic. You just send it up. You can yeah, retreat no, it for free. But now, retreating into the V-Star looks yep. like. Yep. And I think Charlie is just going to power up the Sandaconda V Max. And there it is. Gabe says, <laughs> Wait, I, gotta I take a definitely look at that. need to read this card. So Sandaconda V Max, not really a card you would have expected to see in this matchup, but it's G Max Cyclone Attack, deals 180 damage. And then you move any amount of energy from your Pokemon to your other Pokemon in any way that you like. So you can maneuver Ooh. your energy however you want after the attack. But the more important thing, it has 320 hit points, which is a tall order for Malamar to KO. A very tanky boy indeed. And this is kind of shows uh, how you can maybe play against the other decks in the metagame, right? Again, having that fighting, uh, typing, being able to hit other Arceus decks for that weakness, having that energy acceleration to keep yourself flexible as your opponent's taking those big prize hits. Mm -hmm and then being able to redistribute that as you see fit with such a big attack. Very important to see here. But now with Gabe playing the Fog Crystal, trying to come back after this Malamar is, is KO'd. This Inke here was from the last round. This can be evolved th so the engine isn't the properly one, yeah. disrupt disrupted as of yet. But now... Yeah, Gabe's done a great job of kind of streaming these attackers and also done a great job of being able to just utilize the shady dealings turn after turn after turn. And we see right away scoop up net grabbed to the front. I actually wonder if Gabe could have possibly won this turn since Charlie put that VMAX Pokemon in play that gives up three prizes. We know that Gabe drew the boss's orders off True. of the prize cards. But I think the hand was just not quite good enough to make it happen. Scoop you would have needed net onto the Italian. Right. You would have needed the Malamar and would have needed eight Rapid Strike cards, which is quite a tall order. So Gabe is going to be content trying to get to seven Rapid Strike cards in hand, pick up the one-hit knockout on this Arceus, and go down to just one prize card remaining. Right. Very important to note, the V-Star Pokemon are only worth two prizes, right. and the V-Max are worth three. But again, getting who knows? With, with these Malamar decks, we've already seen Gabe really show the comfort that they have with this list. They're 4-0 in the Swiss already. You know exactly what you would need to do to make that happen, to get this KO on the Sandaconda V, the V Max. And if it's possible, Gabe's going to go for it. And this training court in play has just been so good for Gabe. Being able to just pop that basic psychic energy back to hand, turn after turn after turn. Mm -hmm. And if Gabe can get this knockout with the Rapid Strike Tentacles, all Gabe has to do is play boss's orders onto Galarian Zigzagoon and only shuffle in two Rapid Strike cards on the next turn, which should be very easy to do to close out the game. So this is definitely looking like Gabe is in a very favorable position right now. Yep, and still 30 minutes left in the round, so yep, it's good to finally get this this game one out of the way. There's oh, does he the have boss. It? Does he have it? Oh, no, he's going to bring up the Luminion. Okay. So it doesn't even have enough to knock out the Arceus V-Star, but Gabe is just kind of content, like, okay, if I can just take a two-prize knockout this turn, mm -hmm. I need to be able to pop off a little bit next turn, get a bunch of Rapid Strike cards into my hand, and as long as Gabe can make that happen, should still be able to close this one out. Remembering to put the Sobble down. Yep. Very nice. And there's the reveal. Yep. Dealing enough damage here to knock out the Luminion and two great prizes there. Fog Crystal can find a Rapid Strike card in Inke potentially, mm. and the, of course, Impact Energy, or sorry, the uh, Spiral Energy is a Rapid Strike card as well. And it looks like Gabe is going to be in a position to take this on the next round, but what can Charlie do? Charlie is definitely going to want to attack with the Sandaconda here. Mm -hmm. Just put the thing in the active that has the most amount of hit points and make it as difficult as possible for your opponent to close out the game. 
as we said, finding those eight cards is going to be a tall order. Even yep. with, we have the artillery though, um, we've got the spiral energy at the very least. We've still yep. got that Inteleon yep, in, in the, the hand, hand. Yep, yep, yep. from the earlier scoop up net. So the pieces are there, right? That's it. That's four out of eight. Still got to draw the cards though. Still got to draw the cards, so indeed. Charlie is trying to navigate exactly what he needs to do. Does have a boss's orders, was kind of eyeing that up, but I think that's just going to be put on top of the deck with the Primate Wisdom. Picking up another card from the top, trying to just see what other options could be available. I think that might be what Charlie was maybe checking for there, mm -hmm. was looking at the discard, see how many scoop up nets Gabe is down. Ah. Uh, I wonder if potentially Charlie feels like he could uh, stall out a little bit, and that's what Charlie's actually going to go for. Boss's Orders brings up this Octillery, and we could see the Sandaconda's first attack dealing 60 damage with Sand Pulse, and then 20 damage to each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. I have to imagine that that... Uh, no, it's just going to go for the big knockout. Okay. okay. G-Max Cyclone, not going to bank on Gabe not having a scoop-up net, but taking away that Rapid Strike Search, because that's one less Rapid Strike card Gabe has guaranteed access to here it is. Can Gabe find eight cards to the pick up this KO? The moment of truth. Charlie did everything they could in the previous round to play towards that out of can you find eight <laughs> rapid strike cards to make the tentacles KO my big boy. Yep. Now Gabe plays the Fog Crystal, grabs the NK out of the deck, has Cynthia's Ambition, and there oh. are just a ton of rapid strike cards in the deck. Let's see how many Gabe can draw. It's only going to be four. How many of these are Rapid Strike cards, though? You've got to have two, a full three, grip four. of Rapid Strike. Is it possible? Has access to the Intellion still. There's a Spiral Energy I saw. I think that's a lot of Rapid Strike cards. I think he might have it. Gabe plays the Shady Dealings, can grab two more trainers out of the deck. Brawly, both of those being Rapid Strike cards. And is there enough? Eight is all that's needed. I think they're all Rapid Strike cards, and there it is. Gabe Shumwe able to pick up the KO. I think that's actually nine, just a little <laughs> bit more <laughs> just on top. And Gabe Shumwe wins game number one. Excellent game number one. Excellent showing from the Rapid Strike Malamar deck, a list that a lot of players, I think, had some confidence could do well in this format for this regionals. And Gabe certainly making it look fantastic. Absolutely. I think a key turn there in that game was early on. Gabe chose to play Brawly. Didn't want to go aggressive mm -hmm. after a Cynthia's Ambition. Just hoped to draw into the pieces. Said, okay, I'm not going to get a knockout this turn. I'm going to play it slow. Set up my board, use the Brawly, get a bunch of Rapid Strike Pokemon in to play, and just had access to all the pieces through the rest of the game. You got to feel a little bit for Charlie. It definitely had a bit of a miss after an incredible turn two mm -hmm. with that single strike mustard. The hand was just not really working for him after yeah, that. Gabe picked up on how awkward yeah. Charlie's opener was and was able to very safely yep. make that guess to play it a little bit slower, but Charlie wasn't able to come back into it quite fast enough. And now as we shuffle the cards and try again in game two, Charlie could very easily, you know, get that engine online, get that V-Star, the Star Birth, get the energies accelerated onto that Sanaconda, yep. and then try to, uh, you know, take that first prize. And then suddenly against the single prize deck, you're ahead on the trade potentially, unless another big combo can come through. Yeah, I think for Charlie, the strat you actually want to go with is attack with two Arceus V-Star and then attack with one Sandaconda V-Max. That's three different Pokemon that have a ton of HP that it's really difficult for your one opponent to KO. One Inkay, one scoop up net in the prizes. Definitely important things to note, but there's still plenty of Inkays to work with. Mm -hmm. And having scoop up net in the prizes is actually not too bad because when you draw it as a prize, it's now going to be a piece you have access to on that coming turn. And that is a bad starter. And Charlie just Ooh. has an energy and a pass. Oh no, his hand is terrible. And Two then Beedrills. The Lumini and the Luminion V being in the active, oh, he moves out no. on that powerful ability. Gabe is going to start it off with a Fog Crystal, and it's looking much better, but that is heartbreaking. Tough, tough, tough for Charlie Lockyer. Brawly coming through, just can get more cards down. Wow, and Charlie. But how do you pivot from here if you're Charlie? You're Charlie can't the, believe the it. V. We've got the Mustard. Has a Cramomatic in hand, but doesn't even have an item card to try to discard. And Gabe's getting the perfect start. Gets a second NK down, gets a few more Pokemon in play with the Brawly. Just the ideal turn when you're going second, seeing that Brawly in the opening hand. Gabe's going to check 
the prizes for just a minute. You definitely mm -hmm. see this from the top level players. Want to take their time, want to make sure that they are totally aware of what they have access to, because you can also make plays based off of knowing something is prized, right? Yeah, try if, to go more aggressive so you can draw yeah. through some of your prize cards, try to get that key piece if it's missing. Yeah, or and take a little bit of a risk. Like, if you know you prized multiple draw supporters, mm -hmm. you can leave yourself with kind of a bad hand, knowing like, hey, I have a pretty high percent chance to take a supporter off of my prizes. But after this fantastic setup, we just get the fusion, the spiral energy. Charlie's waiting for a top deck here. Charlie needs to top deck something or else this game could be over next turn. Let's see what the card is. Is it a supporter? Is it a basic Pokemon? It's a Cramomatic. So we can see Cramomatic away. A Cramomatic. What is the flip? Dice roll. It's a heads. Okay. So All right. So what do we get here now, Chip? Sigh of relief for Charlie. Definitely a supporter. 100% <laughs> a supporter card. Just need to research the hand, draw a new one because there, there's just nothing yeah, happening so for you with double the, V-Drill there. We're going to get the research here. Shuffle, try again, and once again, Charlie finding themselves in a position of just struggling to get anything threatening in play, get anything set up. Gets the second Lumini on V down off the Cramomatic to get the Professor's Research, get that one extra card of thinning. I think Charlie is kind of like, why did I do that? <laughs> I think realizing, <laughs> like, I didn't need to use Lumini on because the Cramomatic just lets you get mm -hmm. the the whatever card you want out of the deck. So <laughs> a little bit of a lapse in judgment there from Charlie. Realized it and was just like, you know what? Hey, listen, yeah. you know, it, it thins another card out of your deck, right? That's like, so like I said, it, it gets gives one you higher odds to find the Arceus and the energy, which is what Charlie wants this turn. And oh, but oh my gosh, he drew all energies. His hand is just full of energy cards. What is Luminion V's attack? It Can requires a water energy. Nope. Oh, no. No, no. Can't can't use that. Oh, Charlie does have a quick ball. Okay, so Charlie's got something here. And it's I see, not quite as bad as I thought. We see the Galarian Zigzag Goon. We, we've got something going on here. And he's Sanaconda. just going to pass. Oh, man, that is unfortunate for Charlie Lockyer. Passes it over to Gabe. And yeah, that Charlie looking so defeated right now. When you're at the fourth round of Swish, trying to make the top cut in game two, potentially about to get 2 0 in this best of three, you know, you can't let these bad draws shake you. He's got to stick to his guns, got to keep that mental sharp and try to find the line to get back into this game. Gabe now has plenty of time to just get set up, doesn't even need to start swinging just yet. He yeah, has plenty of time. It's a little awkward for Gabe because yeah, I saw in the hand actually has the Cynthia's Ambition. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those weird spots where it's like, do I just use this to only draw up to five cards? It definitely feels a little bad, but if you can get four Rapid Strike cards, you're actually dealing enough to knock out this Luminion thanks to the 20 damage hit you had earlier. And so Gabe does feel comfortable drawing just three here. Just three Cynthia's Ambition. Powerful stuff, yep. again, for the single prize deck. And... Very smart, right? Not trying to be greedy to get the maximum value. Just going to push the very clear window of opportunity and yep. advantage that you have in play here. And as the you know Malamar player, you have to be able to identify these moments. And of course, we see here on the table, it's laid out before them on a silver platter. Fog Crystal now going in for another Inke, another yep. backup attacker just getting it set up or potentially even uh, shuffle this into the deck. Yeah, just needed one more Rapid Strike card, yep. I think, so that Gabe could bench the, the Sobble here, and that is a two-prize KO. And usually you're fine with Malamar coming from behind a little bit because the prize trade is so favorable for you. Mm -hmm. When you're the one taking the first KO, you are feeling really comfortable with the position you find yourself in. Now Sandicon V promoted to the active spot, and Charlie has to figure out what you do from this position. We don't have an Arceus yet. Nothing that can really attack. Maybe we can find a Sandaconda V Max, get yeah. something through. But Char Charlie had a quick ball in hand last turn, so I'm kind of confused why maybe he didn't go for a quick ball into a Arceus and attached to that. And you could also, with the double turbo energy, just go for a Trinity Charge and throw a bunch of energies onto Sandaconda. And then you also put a Pokemon with higher HP in the active spot. Yeah, I but think maybe perhaps after seeing that Gabe is running that boss's orders, maybe got a little bit spooked about trying to get that Arceus set up and have it gusted up and taken down. But Crobat is going to be the card of choice. Yeah, and you can just kind of tell by Charlie's body language. He's already feeling a little defeated in this one. He's very, very far behind. Still going to play it out, though, try to figure out exactly what he could do to fight back into this one. We did say, you know, the Rapid Strike Malamar, one of the deceptively difficult decks to play. Could there be 
you know, a misstep or a missequence if Gabe is, certainly, certainly. you know, almost, you know, going mad with power, enjoying their favorable position right. so much, there could be a shuffle or something that goes awry and maybe there's a prize penalty that could bring Charlie back into this. I'm trying to give them as much cast energy <laughs> as I can at this point. Yeah, I'm not totally sure what's happening with this double turbo energy being put on Galarian Zigzagoon, but we're just making this guy as powerful as possible on the bench. I imagine Charlie is trying to find a Sandaconda VMAX here and just go for the Sand Pulse. You could, if Sandaconda sticks around long enough, theoretically, you know, spread a bunch of damage and maybe try to set up a multiple prize turn. Mm -hmm. But that's really tough whenever Gabe is playing so many copies of Scoop Up Net. Anytime something is close to being KO'd, G Gabe can just kind of pick it up and not really worry about that too much. Another quick ball, another search, another... Arky is finally hitting the bench. But, but can't even attach to it this turn. Yeah, already attached with the uh, turbo energy. Just wanted to have that on the side. I guess what it was is you're putting the double turbo energy down just for the sake of maybe hitting this with the scoop up net, the Galarian Zigzagoon. Yeah, well, the scoop up net actually, like, it discards all the cards attached to that Pokemon. Oh. So it would just get sent to the discard pile. I think, I mean, Charlie played it because he was trying to draw extra cards with From Crobat. The Crobat yeah. yeah. So that was the reason for it, but... It, 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 I do question it a little bit because you know that you really need to attach to an Arceus this turn. So and, the, and the damage penalty from the double turbo energy really doesn't even matter in the scenario when you're going up yeah. against a single prize deck like this. And Rabbit insult Shrek Malamar with 120 HP. And insult to injury here. Sandaconda, being a fighting type, actually is hitting into Malamar's resistance. <laughs> so Sand Pulse is only dealing 30 damage. That's a four hit knockout on the active Rapid Strike Malamar. That's uh, that's not very good. And what's so surreal is when we saw like a glimpse of the power of Charlie's deck in the first game, but to have everything fall apart like this in game two, we really don't get the opportunity for um, him to give the Rapid Strike Malamar a, a run for their money. Gabe's gonna take a moment to check the discard pile of Charlie. This is something that you'll see all the best players doing. Checking what resources your opponent has played. Just make sure mm -hmm. you have perfect information as much as you can to what your opponent may or may not have access to. I think Gabe was probably eyeing up like, okay, is that Raihan in the discard pile? Because that is Charlie's way Especially to try to attack this turn. Especially research like that. Right, right. So now Gabe needing a lot of Rapid Strike cards to get this KO, but I think especially since Gabe has boss's orders in this list, you mm -hmm. can be okay to hit KOing the Sandaconda. Charlie doesn't have a way to heal this Pokemon. Especially with the resistance, and mm -hmm. you can take like one or two turns for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, and Charlie is gonna be pressured to try to like get it out of the active spot potentially. And if you don't knock out this Sandaconda, Charlie actually just can't attack with anything else this coming turn. So it's really Charlie's only option, unfortunately. And yeah, I mean, Gabe's just in an absolutely dominant position. No other way to say it. And at this point, you're just focusing on playing clean, doing what you've been practicing yep. all day and even before the regionals began with this Rapid Strike Malamar, a list that a lot of players picked up on early as very strong with the release of Brilliant Stars mm -hmm. and have been putting in the reps. And again, it's showing here, Gabe getting uh, you know a couple of these awkward starts from the opponent, giving them a little bit of an easy time here on the stream, but... That doesn't mean that the first three rounds of the Swiss to carry them here, the four rounds, weren't very hard-won victories. So it doesn't look like Gabe's going to have enough to get a KO. Would have needed eight Rapid Strike cards, which is quite a lot to get to. So is going to be content just hitting for a little bit of damage. And even if Charlie does retreat this, mm -hmm. we know that Gabe plays the one copy of Boss's Orders to try to find that later on. Yeah, just shuffles them all in. Even uh, putting the Ambition back in the deck, you're just going to well, push that back out. It was, it was something else. Ambition's not a rapid strike card, so oh. it can't you'd be it, it can't be a target. I was there. worried for a second. Yeah, right. I was like, <laughs> is this the opportunity? No. So I believe Charlie or sorry, Gabe, hanging on to a scoop up net, I think, was that last card. So no matter what Charlie KOs, like even if Charlie went for like a boss knockout on Octillery, mm. if Charlie could find a way to piece that together, which I don't think Charlie has the option to, uh, even if that happened, you, you still can scoop up net a Drizzile and use shady dealings. Ordinary Rod comes through. You get to shuffle two energies and two Pokemon of your choice from the discard pile back into the deck. Trying to get something going. Again, you know, big shout out to Charlie for playing this one out. Kind of recovering from the tilt we saw evident on their body language in the first couple of rounds, but seems to be kind of hitting a groove. Yep. Does hit a research, so it can draw seven new cards. Pretty nice. A zero 
cards, discarded research, always love to see it. And now seven new cards to work with. Does find a replacement Sandaconda, but Charlie only plays one VMAX, I'm pretty sure. So maybe just trying to power it up to attack with its attack. Uh, it deals only 140 damage, which is not enough to knock out a Malamar. But I guess <laughs> if these Malamars keep getting poked, <laughs> it would eventually be enough. So that's the best line that Charlie has the hope for. And this damaged Sandaconda now in the active, going to be taken down very easily by Rapid Strike Malamar. Yeah. Prinus Focus coming through, going up to six now. And Gabe is going to take a look at the hand and see how much more work needs to be done to make this combo come through. So 200 damage sitting there on the active. It has 120 HP remaining, so only needing to find three Rapid Strike cards. And that's easy pretty easy. Peasy. <laughs> very yep. easy to accomplish. And that'll send Gabe to just one prize card remaining when Charlie has yet to take a single one. Fog Crystal finds the Inke. Even if something were to happen to these Malamar in play, we've still got more of a backup. This fills yeah. the hand once again to shuffle that, potentially just back into the deck with the tentacle scoop up net. Drizzile comes back through. Shady Love that rotation. Once again. Yep, yep, perfect. And that also heals the damage off of that other Drizzile. So mm -hmm. any fears that Gabe could have possibly had of Sand Pulse knocking it out, uh, are a little uh, negated at this point. Yeah, you talked about it earlier, Chip, the scoop up net so important for right. just having a way to just subtly counter this side spread deck strategy that, that Charlie has been forced into at this point. And I wonder, you know, when you're playing the Sandaconda deck with the Arceus, you are employing this again for the mirror match, trying to hit other Arceus decks right, for weakness. Right. And how many times have you been locked into Sand Pulse as your true strategy? <laughs> I wonder how many times Charlie's yeah, been in this situation. Definitely less than ideal, I would have to say. Charlie does have that Arceus V-Star in play. <laughs> Double turbo <laughs> energy there on Galarian Zigzagoon. So with Arceus V-Star, we could see the Starbirth, which could lead mm -hmm. to Raihan, which can lead to an Arceus attack. But I've got to feel like it is just a little too late. Charlie getting going finally when Gabe only has one prize remaining. I know, already such a huge hand and then just going to draw an additional prize. Uh, but there's just, it's one of those situations that it's just, it, it breaks your heart, you know, as a caster. When you see the potential of a deck and you see how hard the player is trying to play it out and make it work. but when you're this far behind, six prizes to one remaining. Yeah. Uh, In these type of situations, like realistically, your only win condition is gusting something to the active and mm -hmm. trying to stall your opponent out. And we know that Gabe has so many scoop up nets that that strategy's just never going to work. And Charlie's probably aware of that as well. So uh, is going for the Raihan off of the Starbirth. So that is going to be the support Order played this turn. I think also grabbed the ordinary rod. So mm -hmm. yeah, could, I see it there. Could could get the Sandaconda V Max back, and is that what we're gonna see? I think so. Yep, Sandaconda V V Max. Yep, and can put one back energy. up to two energies. Mm -hmm. Is gonna go ahead and do one of each type. We still have that grass energy in the discard pile for the Raihan here. Yep. And that is the card Charlie will choose to play, Raihan. Oh, it has to attach an energy first. Mm -hmm. Make sure we do that. And yeah, we'll attach it to, I think the Sandaconda, it looks like. And <laughs> Charlie <laughs> slamming the snake into play. <laughs> I'm going down swinging, baby. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm playing into this, this spread damage line. Hey, listen, and you're gonna do the work. You play this unique card. You know, if you're having a bad game, you, you just you gotta go down swinging. And I respect Charlie for that. I know, the glistening, gigantic snake. There's the air balloon. Yeah, don't want to retreat that double turbo off of, uh, <laughs> off of Zizigoon <laughs> there. Could come in handy later. And the Sandaconda comes to the active, and Charlie's just going <laughs> to... Charlie uh, is going to take the knockout, actually, not using the spread attack, and will move these energies around however he sees fit. So the double turbo energy after being left in play on the Zigzagoon from such a long time okay, ago, makes sense then. finally yep. okay, getting like reassigned. And Gabe has the boss's orders in hand, brings up that Galarian Zigzagoon and more than enough rapid strike cards in hand to pick up the KO. One last prize card and Gabe Shumway wins a convincing match 2-0 oh over Charlie Lockyer.
the two and oh, locked in. A lot of these games have been going to time. So much shuffling, so many, right. so much back and forth, but just have having a dominant 2-0 is just kind of refreshing at this point. Again, very, very unfortunate for Charlie. Had such an awkward start in game one and then in game two redefined how awkward a start <laughs> could, could be with Lu even Lumineon V yeah. having to be the starting active Pokemon. It, it was not great from Charlie. Whiffed a bit off of the turn mm -hmm. uh, to yeah. Mustard in game number one and then game two just yeah, had the two beat drills in hand.